Welcome in. It is another episode of Line the Game. We've been gone a while. We are back. Um, glad to be back. I um, I'm I'm thankfully. Uh, you ever have a vacation where you go on vacation? You need a vacation from the vacation. I that was exactly right. how I was after my cruise. So yes. <laughs> you know, we go fishing. I got a group of friends. We go fishing every year in Canada, and it, we go up to Lake of the Woods. It's an amazing trip. But we fish from sun up to sundown, very little breaks, go to bed, crank it back up again. And man, after seven days, your your hands are beat to death, everything. I mean, it is it is a lot. Mm-hmm. But um it was a great trip. Coincided with the release of the new Jason Isabel and the four hundred unit album, Weather Vane, which is amazing. So I got to listen to a lot of that on the trip and analyze it and listen to the lyrics and everything else. So I was happy about that, but it's great to be back here on the Buffalo Rumblings Network. Uh, line the game real quick. We're going to be on Wednesday nights at eight, correct? Is well, that, is that our most of the time it'll now? be it, yeah, it'll be most of the time Wednesday at nine. There'll at be nine, a couple, okay. of, yeah, there'll be a couple Wednesdays where uh, we'll have to switch with uh, the eight o'clock show um, okay. here and there. So, but right. we'll figure we'll that out. When... Wednesday, yeah, we'll yes. be moving to Wednesday, which is which is great. Being in the middle of the week, one week, uh, one day closer to uh, Sunday, which is always good as far as anal- uh, you know analyzing previous week's game, uh, talking about the upcoming game, all those different things. Right. So we're happy about that. Um, yep. And you know, on Thursdays, uh, just to let everybody know, we do have a new show that will <clears throat> um, you know that comes out tomorrow. It's called uh, it's with um, AJ. Uh, he just did an internship with the the Cover One guys. Very very smart kid. So tune into that eight thirty um, tomorrow night. Uh, it's his first show. So take a look at that. So real quick, as always, hit the like button, smash the subscribe button. We appreciate the support. We appreciate you tuning in. Another episode of Line the Game of the Buffalo Rumblings Network. We had a show planned. We will get into that a little bit, <laughs> but <we> obviously. <laughs> Obviously, that has been blown up over the last couple of days of, uh, of uh, I don't know what you want to call it. If you want to call it Diggs Gate, uh, yeah. Bill's Gate, Josh <laughs> Gate, go. McDermott Gate. I don't know what you want to call it. But uh, obviously, um, the Bills have made the headlines across the sports world with what's yeah. going on over minicamp. They have canceled tomorrow's last minicamp workout. Which they've done for the last couple of years, and most teams <clears throat> do. Let's put that caveat in there. <laughs> well, I just want to – and here's the deal, okay? And we're going to get into this. I'm going to give you my opinion on all this, and I have I have some things I want to say about this because, you know, unless you're in the room, unless you're Diggs, unless you're Allen, unless you're McDermott, you can hear stuff forever, and yes, you do get tidbits and things like that. But honestly, unless you're there, you don't know. Um, the locker room, at least the locker room, used to be a sacred place. It seems now that way too much gets out. But um, obviously, we have had some issues. Um, last season's uh, turmoil, last season's frustrations with Stephon Diggs have leaked into this offseason. Um something that I was worried about. Um, obviously it's happened. We'll see if it continues or not, but right. Sarah, we have had some things happen at one bills drive over the last few days. Yeah. So, uh, you know, you pretty much would have to be under a rock to not have heard, but, uh, mandatory minicamp became, uh, uh, began on Tuesday and Stefan Diggs was not there. He was the only one that was not, um, Little by little, you know, little things came out. Obviously, uh, regarding it, he had he was home and he he was there in Buffalo over the weekend. He, you know, went to um, meet with Bean. He met with McDermott. He ended up having his medical done on Monday, and then we find out he was actually there Tuesday morning, um, and then end up leaving before practice. So little by little, everyone's piecing together, you know, all the the different theories of you know, everything else, you know, that could have happened and why, and why is he upset and, you know, what's going on. And, you know, I think that, you know, McDermott usually is pretty closely, you know, closed lipped. Um, And you can tell he was still a little (laughs) in his feelings a little bit um, when he had his uh, press conference and he was asked if, you know, about Diggs and if he was concerned and he said, very concerned. He just reiterated, the same word. Well, that everybody took that everywhere 
left and right and up and down. And then you have Alan come on for his press conference and he makes a comment that it, you know, something not football related. Um, so then everyone's can, you know, has a, you know, speculation as to what that could be and what he meant by that. I think right. that when you're sitting in front of, um, you know, a room full of people asking you questions, sometimes you don't pick the right words. And it's even, it's, it's hard for us. Sometimes, you know, you guys sit here and see me say, Oh God, what's that word? I'm trying to think like, especially when you're put on the spot, it's very hard you know, to not say too much to, to, you know, give people at least, you know, breadcrumbs, you know, as much as you can without saying the wrong thing. And sometimes you do say the wrong thing. And I think both of them probably got together and said, okay, we need to do better tomorrow with whatever we're talking about. Um, because today was, was very different. And, um, you know, it, it's one of those things, but Regardless of all of that drama yesterday, less than 24 hours later, uh, you know, Diggs ends up at camp today. Um, his agent did say yesterday that he was surprised by some of the comments. And that led to even more speculation as to, you know, whether or not, um, you know, McDermott knew. Uh, and then I think he, you know, kind of answered that today. But um, all in all, Diggs was there. He was laughing and smiling whether or not you know you know it they're they're putting on you know a little bit of a show at least it feels good well, to know that he was there well f well first of all i you know and obviously the bills pr team uh, earned their money today because last <laughs> night they huddled up and they came up with a plan um props to mcdermott allen and others for executing said plan mcdermott of course fell on his shield and um you know, basically um, came out, as you said earlier, said that he was, you know, Stefan was excused. I don't think McDermott said the wrong thing the other day. I don't think he said the wrong thing when he said he was concerned. Yeah, I, I don't think, think anyone concerned. thinks it was the wrong thing. I think it was more not something McDermott normally says. He doesn't usually show his cards like that. So well, I yeah, exactly. That... And everybody gets on him for giving, you know, and they said it in, you know, and I, and I think it was Daryl that said it in the comments. Everybody gets on McDermott for being, you know, pretty much dry and giving coach speak. He comes out and says what he what he truly believes, and he gets gassed up for that. Yeah. And and the fact is this, I, I I really don't believe that we should have this issue. If you know what Chad Hall was fired a while ago, the new coach was hired at the wide receiver position a while ago. But he wasn't fired. No one knows that he 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 left. Because it's his no contract it's, was up. It's nomenclature. We're not going to well, renew your contract. Yes, but we don't know that fired. as well. I, that was, I, and I've Scott because I never heard, and and that's one thing that I talked about um, yesterday. I never heard whether or not they even offered to renew his contract or if he turned it down. So um, what I heard is that he wanted a clear path to one day become an OC and he didn't see that once Dorsey became OC. So well, obviously he probably it's also against, like, woke up. He probably also woke up and didn't want to deal with what happened today. He's probably at home saying or wherever he is, thank goodness I don't have to deal with this again. That's probably part of it as well. That's just my opinion. Uh, but seriously, I mean there there are there are there are more important things in life than to have to be, you know, to have a, a job like this, to have to be dealing with this when this should have been handled a long time ago. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and Daryl you know. also says his sister said he was looking for an opportunity of an expanded role. That's what I heard. I didn't, I did not hear that they didn't renew his contract or they got fired, that he wanted to potentially become an OC one day. And he wanted a, you know, position that was, you know, a spot on a roster that was going to give him that position and that, that opportunity one day. So Again, it's speculation, and we're all, you know, trying but to can figure we, can, it out. Can, I know, but can we – I just want to get to the crux of this thing. I want to get to the – and like I said, truth is truth is, is all over the place. Right. But the fact is, is that we're still having issues at the start of mandatory minicamp. You know, hello, Dalton Kincaid. Welcome to the Bills. Enjoy. <laughs> Um, you know, all, and, the, and, all the rookies, yeah, right, exactly. And 
And if you were at if if you were at workouts when everybody else is at workouts, you could have had these conversations then. Not wait until all the cameras were there and decided to do this. You've but, been you've been waiting to put that whole voluntary <laughs> OTAs on me because I always said it's not a big I've deal. Because I've done it, Sarah. I've done it. It's not. They call it voluntary because they have to because the CBA. But everybody in that building expects you to be there. They do. I mean, it's 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 really. I mean, I just the football, only thing no. that bothered me is that they were only. They were only pinpointing it on him, but there were several people that did not go to, to OTAs. And, and they you know, should have been they were... there as well. They should have been no, there as well. No but that's really besides the that. point. Yes. That's, a, yeah. that's besides the point. I, I think that, but let, let, let's get to the crooks of, of why we've gotten to this point. And then we'll listen to Coach McDermott today. And we'll also yeah. get into some other stuff. We'll listen to uh, Mitch Morse, who had the most refreshing response. Yep. to the situation today. But real quick, this this is I think this is the crux of of the situation. This is this is why we're where we are or why St- Stefan is is upset. And and it says Diggs's production declined in the second half of the 2022 season. He started the year on pace for his best career season statistically with 72 receptions on 98 targets for 985 yards and seven touchdowns in the first nine games. In the nine games that followed, which, by the way, were games that followed after Josh Allen got hurt, um, in the nine games that followed, including the postseason, Diggs caught 47 receptions on 74 targets and four touchdowns. So, obviously, the production is what he, you know, talk about the wide receiver coach, talk about whatever. It's about him catching the football. It's about production and him wanting numbers. Um, and, 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 and it's pretty much that simple. And real quick, I want to kill something else. And you did, you've done a tremendous job with this. And, 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 and this, this area is obviously the salary cap. You've done a tremendous job breaking this down. And, you know, when people say, well, he's just trying to force a trade. Well, here's the numbers folks. He signed a four year, $96 million extension last season. Trading him would would incur a significant dead cap number of thirty one point one million dollars in dead money. Next and, uh, year, there's yeah, more this would, year too. Thirteen million hit, this year. Yeah, that would hit if he was traded. His deal included seventy million guaranteed, the third most all time for a wide receiver. Plus, plus he's one year away from the gold number. He's twenty nine years old. So that in the in 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 a nutshell is where we are, and I think why we've gotten here. And we'll try to break down a little bit of it as we go forward with the show. Today. Yeah. Yeah. And and just as you were saying, Jerry, and, and I've <clears throat> probably tweeted this probably too much at this point in time. He, the fact of the matter is he is not going to be traded. So everyone's saying Giants, right. Dallas, I mean, we are not going to pay somebody $45 million base, basically. I mean, the, he's already been paid it. It's, you know, it's, it's cash that he got in the off season and then next year we would be, you know, uh, thirty-one million dollars next year. This year it's, uh, you know, thirteen million. Yes, we free up a million dollar, million five, I think it is, if we were to trade him this year. But that's still thirteen, you know, plus million dollars on this year as dead cap that we can't use, and thirty-one right. million dollars next year that we would right. not be able to use for right. a player that is not playing. It's not happening. It is just not happening. So everyone can stop saying all this. They got to figure it out. They would rather have him literally sit on the sideline or not suit up at all than to let him go for that much money, in my opinion. I mean, maybe next year, you know, uh, not next year, the year after, excuse me, it it becomes a little bit more if it's a post-June for, you know, post-June first designation. There is things that they can do next year, but it's not happening this year. It's not. So, and, and, and I think there's another area too that you have to look at, and and this kind of goes along the way with everything. I mean, this is a football team whose window is not opening, but it's actually closing as far as opportunities. There's players that are getting further along in their careers, and when I say players, I mean the star players. There's older players like Von Miller. Stefan's getting ready to be thirty. Poyer's older. Okay, you've got older players there. You've got a new stadium being built, so there's going to want that. You know, they want that to pop. There's there's a lot of pressure with it. There's playoff failures recently. 
You've got a defense that underperformed last year to the point where the head coach has decided to take over the defense, which to me is a sign of he's feeling pressure. He's feeling heat. You have the Hamlin situation. You've got the Kim Pagula situation. This franchise has a lot of pressure on it moving into this next 2023 season. Yeah, I mean, there's there's nothing to argue with, you know, about there. I don't think necessarily <laughs> that um, that McDermott's job is on the line, you know, right now. Um, I just think that the the team would potentially get dismantled um, if you know it's if they don't start to you know have it that that step forward at this point in time. Um, I don't think the window's closing for everyone. I think that as long as you have Josh Allen um, as quarterback, our window's open. What year um, is this for Josh Allen? His sixth, going into his sixth. Yep, going into his right. sixth. I mean that he's he's creeping along. I, I you know I don't think the I mean, way, he I could want... yeah I mean he could potentially potentially play until he's forty if you know right like, exactly. But know. I'm, I'm just saying there's a lot. There's a lot going to it. Spence doesn't agree with me. He thinks that all teams are under pressure. Yes, they are. This this is different because this group's been anointed the last couple of years as the team to go to the Super Bowl. They haven't gotten there. So there's some of that as well. So I, I do think the building some is – Some of that pressure, I think, has come off this year, though. I think that not – I mean, we have um, – and this was one of the topics we were supposed to talk about today, um, you know, but the dig stuff kind of, you know, overwhelmed that, that opportunity. There, there are some, you know, analysts out there that have us at nine and eight. And, yes. you know, so there is a, a good potential that people do not see us as, um, you know, as Super Bowl contenders anymore. Well, um, if you, if you follow, and I know you have, you follow the timelines today. There was <laughs> the, the Bills Mafia uh, wasn't having any of it as far as as far as I mean, they were in the middle of this Diggs Allen situation, McDermott and all that. So I don't know. I just, I just sense that a little bit. Um, you know, I don't know if there's some other things going on, obviously, but um, I think what we need to do right now is as we talk about this, let's, let's get into McDermott's press. Let's get into his press okay. conference today. Let's hear what he had to say today. We'll talk about it before we get to Mitch Moore. So here is uh, head coach Sean McDermott from today at one bills drive. Um let me be clear. Steph did everything that we that he was asked to do. He was here Monday and executed his physical on time. Steph reported yesterday, Tuesday, and uh, reported for meetings, at which time um, we had a good conversation, um, great communication. And we got to a point yesterday where I just we just felt like we all needed a break and some space. And so I gave Steph permission uh, to get some space and 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 uh, and head out and uh, and then picked up those conversations after practice. Um, so let me make it clear: it was it was not Steph leaving unexcused. He was excused by me. Um, and so those conversations uh, have got us to a to what I think and believe is a great spot. So right. words of uh, head football coach Sean McDermott, Sarah. I know that you had some comments on that that you wanted to add. Yeah, I think that, you know, he he came out and said exactly what he should have said. Um, he kind of, you know, without explaining what happened yesterday, he explained what happened yesterday. You know, he basically said, you know, his concern, he was concerned because they had those conversations. And, you know, it, so it basically, it basically gives an example of, you know, why he said what he said, that he was very concerned, but at the same time, kind of taking ownership, you know, they had, you know, th those, um, those discussions, it didn't go exactly as how everybody wanted. And he, you know, says that he gave um, stuff the, you know, the day off, um, you know, be, to, to cool down. I think we've all been there, to be honest with you. Um, that's my biggest thing. I've, I've walked out, granted, when I was a little bit younger, I've walked out on a job. And then, you know, <laughs> later on that night been like, do I still have a job? You know, <laughs> obviously he doesn't have to worry about that as much, but I'm, you know, texting my boss, emailing my boss, like, can I still come in tomorrow? <laughs> you know? So I think it, you know, frustrations just kind of ran a little, you know, wild. And um, I, you know, I respect the way he said it, um, but 
you know, at this point in time, like we all know McDermott and so well that you can tell he was kind of the, the conversation was kind of forced in this direction. Um, but how do you feel about, you know, no, it definitely had a, um, it definitely had a, a hostage feel to it. Um, without being insensitive, <laughs> uh, you know, if they'd have panned out, if they'd have panned out, there'd have been two guys behind him, you know, sitting there glaring at him. Um, <laughs> I think, I think the true, his true feelings were said yesterday. Um, he was concerned. And I think his concern was the fact that one of his superstar players was, 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 um, was not portraying, was, was not giving out, um, leadership the way you would expect him to give out leadership um why steph chose to be um this platform in this moment to uh voice his feelings we'll never know um but i think the fact that the agent was right on hand to come in behind and try to clean up things on his behalf um it was probably pretty premeditated in my in my books but even with that being said and um, with all that going on, I, I, I have strong feelings about this because this isn't the first time there's been disagreement in a locker room. It's not the last time there's going to be disagreement in a locker room. You hope that it stays internal. You hope that it's not out there for everyone to see like this situation. But, you know, there is going to be disagreement. And if you look, if you look at my banner, I, I always put something up. And I put on there, everybody love everybody, which, by the way, is is a quote from Jackie Moon from the movie Tropic Thunder, right? And and what I'm getting at is this, and and one of my best friends, a kid I went to college with, a guy I went to college with, one of my best friends, is a track coach at the at the school that our my kids go to. He has that on all of his track uniforms, ELE on the, on all of his stuff. Everybody loves everybody. I think sometimes we get wrapped up in this whole like thing, like everybody needs to like one another. And I was on Twitter earlier today and I posted something and somebody made a comment and they're like, you know, this is ridiculous. This isn't high school or little league or even college. You've got men that are performing jobs. Everybody here has a job. You go to work every day. You don't like everybody you work with. Okay. It's just a simple fact. It's the way it is. It's, it's life, right? You put a lot, you put a locker room together. You put that many guys in one locker room. You're not going to like everybody. Like is a fleeting feeling. It's like, you know, it's when you have success, you win games. Hey, you're happy. You like that. But really that goes away. There's, you know, that's not anything that stays with you. You can't focus on the like, you got to focus on the love. And what love brings in that locker room is it brings respect and it brings trust. That's what good teams are built upon. You don't have to like the guy next to you, but you better love him. And I don't care if Steph and Josh shake hands. They do all their little, uh, pre uh, choreograph routine. I don't care if they like one another, but I do care if they love one another enough that they'll respect each other. They'll respect the team and they'll do what they need to do to win because off of that love is built from, from trust, you know, and, and those types of things. So I think that's the biggest deal. And this, this, this next uh, piece we're getting ready to hear from Mitch Morris starting center of the bills. And obviously one of the true leaders of that football team, uh, very Kent Hole like today, and what he had to say. But listen to Mitch Morris and what he has to say about the situation, and I think you'll hear what I'm getting at. Uh, I think Josh and him have a symbiotic relationship where they make both better. He's done so much for our team. That's why it's such big news in the media. You know, he's a, such an important piece. I don't know if it's good to speculate whether it's in the building or out of the building without us knowing what's going on. So for us, we just. We'll let the people do that what they do. I love Stefan Diggs. I got shit to do. I got to come out here and do my job, you know? And and I want Steph and, and everyone to be the happiest version of themselves. He is one of, he's, he's one of the best teammates I've been around. I also think that they're working through it. I think they're, they're doing the thing that they're supposed to do, which is have possibly uncomfortable conversations, have some, have some candidness, which can be hard at times. But in the end, you appreciate it and you work out, whether any facet of life. So uh, to answer your question, I don't totally know what's going on, so I can't answer it. But I'm sure it'll work itself out one way or another. Um, um, I'm just telling you that that was about as refreshing as you can get. And it's about as truthful as you can get. Um, hey, people got stuff to do. I got a job to do. 
we all got jobs to do. We get paid really, really well. Um, disagreements are going to happen. You got to work through them and right. you got to get to the task at hand in which that task at hand is winning football games and ultimately trying to win a championship. And um, it doesn't fall on deaf ears that it, it was an offensive lineman that was the one that had to say that <laughs> because <laughs> I'm telling you, when you go in the locker room and if that, if that locker room was open today, most of those riders would be camped out in the OL section of the locker room because I know they're going to get thoughtful and they're going to get truthful answers. That's about as truthful as they come people. I don't know what right. else to tell you. And um, you know, these guys got to get through it and, and hopefully, hopefully it's done. Hopefully they'll get through it. They'll figure it out. I'm not convinced it is done, um, especially if there's a rough patch or a rough stretch of the season. And we could have that because that, that schedule is tough. Can I but, just um, say when it comes to, to Mitch Morris, though, when when I every time I watch him, I feel like the guy's 55 years old. He yeah. just speaks like he's got he's just full of wisdom. <laughs> and It's just yeah. crazy. And then you remember that, like. The guy's what, 29, 28, 29? Yeah. Like, it's crazy to me. Which in the world of football is about 50. Well, but it's, yeah, it's, but... his, his words were a lot like Ken Hola. I mean, this is very Ken Hola ish. It's, yeah. you know, he's got a wife and kids at the house, man. I got, I got shit I got to do. I got to work. I can't worry about these guys. Um, so it's, it's just, it's nice to see that, you know, that, that there is still that viewpoint. But hopefully this gets worked through. Um, you know, Syria, obviously. Um, everyone has an opinion on this. My opinion from jump was, you know, really, honestly, it didn't shock me. Um, and it was like, okay, so what if people need to choose sides, choose sides, you know, do what you, you know, do what you need to do. You know, obviously I said this earlier on Twitter, there are no demilitarized zones anymore. You've got to be one side or the other. There's no common area that you can hang out in. Right. Um, so, you know, hopefully they get it done. But, there was uh, a, a comment that says, uh, could have said this yesterday. It, uh, is this the first sign <clears throat> that uh, his D.C. responsibilities, meaning McDermott, interfere with his head, head coaching decisions? Yeah. And I just wanted to, to kind of, in my opinion, I think yesterday was kind of that spur of the moment. He was still frustrated. If they really did get into this, our, you know, argument, debate, whatever it was, they had the, you know, those, um, you know, the, the discussion to the point where he told stuff that he is, you know, sure, take the day off, you know, that he might have just been, you know, frustrated. And then he goes into this, you know, uh, conference and, you know, press conference and everyone is Steph, 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 and kind of beating him down with the same questions over and over again to the point where he finally said, all right, if you guys want to ask me anything else, you can ask it, but am I answering any more questions about Stefan Diggs? So I think that, um, you know, he, he spoke from the heart in that moment. He wasn't quite thinking of how to put it eloquently in that moment. Um, I don't think it has anything to do with his DC responsibilities. Um, realistically, I don't know if anyone has heard group talk. Um, Greg Rousseau actually, you know, talked about, you know, McD going into the, um, into the um, defensive line room and, you know, with his, his defensive uh, coordinator cap on and how he is remaining, you know, separate and how, how much he's already enjoyed hearing, um, you know, Sean talk and explain the defense. And this is why we do this. And this is why we do that. Um, he's like, I've already learned so much in, the, in a couple of days that I haven't in the first two years. So um, I don't think it's, I don't think it's, you know, an impact on this at all. And I don't, I don't want that to become, a, you know, another narrative that he can't do both jobs. Um, that's a whole nother. And I agree with you. I mean, it's the, the man's done it before he can do it. He's fine. I, 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 you have to let your assistant coaches do their jobs as well. Um, but I, I agree, you know, with, with what you said earlier and others had to say again, McDermott gets blasted if he's, you know, if he's, if he's not emotional or candid, if he's, if he's, you know, stale or coach speak, he gets blasted. If he tells the truth, I mean, what do you want? I mean, what do you want? And the other, the other thing that comes out of this and, and, and really to me, the ultimate message is in, in my world, just being in it and living it. Why do those two have to get together to be good? 
Why do they have to get along to be good? Why do they have to be brothers to be good? Why do they have to yeah, hang out all the time? Why do they? It's the the whole bromance story that you know that kind of started when he came over. You know, we all just want to see it. You know, but basically at the end of the day, everyone's got right. a, a job to do. You're going to go out there. You're going to work, and you know, you just said it earlier. You're not going to like all your coworkers. I no. loved. I loved my job. Um, at the last company I worked for, I could not stand working with one person um, who was uh, kind of my, uh, they were my equal. They were both, we were both, uh, you know, managers, but um, right. I couldn't stand working with them at all whatsoever, but I loved my job. Um, and when we had to come together, we still got, we still had great results. So, you know. It's one of those things that you got to hope. I'm what laughing. are you laughing about? John John Herring said, family does fight. Do people not watch Oprah? Um, oh. <laughs> <laughs> more like Dr. Phil. More, more like Dr. Phil. John. Yeah. But no, I agree with you. I, that, this is this big illusion that we fans create that, you know, it's like when, when they leave, when everybody leaves the stadium, you know, we all go over to the big tree and we all hang out with our, with our wives and, or we, we all go on group vacations together. We all go, you know what I did? I went home. I saw my wife and kids. I fed the dog. You know, I read the newspaper. I had dinner. I drank some coffee and put my feet up. And I tried to get ready for the next day and went to bed, right? It's not this big, it's not this big, you know, my son's in college. It's different. They all live together in apartments. They live together in dorms. They hang out. This is a job, folks. It's a high pressure, high stress job. These guys can get annoyed with one another and it'll be okay. But the but what Spence has talked about in the comments and others have talked about in the comments, if you want to be seen as that guy or as the kids today say him, you have to be a leader <laughs> when it's time to be a leader, right? Your leaders need to lead, show up, work, lead, produce, right? That keeps you employed. You show up to work every day. You work hard, right? You lead your group and you produce on the field. Right. And it's it's that old adage. There's going to come a time. There always comes a time in a lot of these situations with guys that are, you know, maybe create a lot of static. And we, you know, that old saying is you're on the field production bigger than you're off the field issues. And um, right now, Steph's tremendously productive. One of the best right. ever, right? So they've got to figure it out. But it's okay to not like each other. We don't have to pick sides. We don't have to sing Kumbaya. We don't have to hold hands. You know, we don't have to pass around the drum. And everybody gets to beat the drum and talk in the group. It's okay. But I want to ask you this question, Sarah, because I think this is something that you might find interesting. It's something I thought about today before the show, and I didn't want to say nothing to you because I wanted to get your fresh, you know, I wanted to get your. You wanted, wanted to put to, me on the spot, Jerry. I wanted, to, I, wanted, to. I wanted to get your, I'm really concerned, mm -hmm. comment, you know, your, right. your true Sean McDermott. Being the prideful player that he is and the guy that is is seems to be highly sensitive to, to hearing things outside the stadium and locker room. Do you think Stefan Diggs got in his feels a little bit because of the massive groundswell by the fan base and, and, and even some teammates to try to get D hop on the team and try to bring Hopkins on because we needed him in that wide receiver room on top of Diggs. Do you think that maybe deep down inside that bothered him a little bit? I think if anyone personally, if anyone's bothered by anything, it should it, it should be Davis, not not Diggs. We never once said, and and I actually just got into a little tiff going back and forth uh, with a friend today. I, there is no way I would have ever put D Hop ahead of Diggs on this team. Um, it was always Diggs would still be one A, D Hop would be that one B slash two. Um, and you know, just even just the chemistry between, between Allen and Diggs, I think would, you know, would keep him in that position. Now, if 
you know, we've heard, we've all heard different speculations of what's going on and what's wrong. I, you know, have heard more about, you know, Diggs being upset with, with Dorsey and the play calling and, um, in, in that realm. Um, if it's targets, you know, that's a whole nother thing because sometimes I'm like, well, if you get targeted 10 times and only catch it four, that's not, you know, that's not the OC's fault necessarily. That could be your fault for not catching the ball. So, um, if he wants more targets, then yeah, it's an issue because he knows that if D hop, you know, someone like D hop comes on this team, he's going to end up having an issue because his targets are going to go down a little bit. Instead of having 130 receptions, he might only have a hundred. I still think he'd have over a hundred catches though. That's I, I, and I, then I you, you know. just drafted a premier catching slot. And I call He'll him. take a year, though. I, I don't think he's – I think that Kincaid You don't pick might him get, 20, whatever, to be a year. He needs to play I, and play good. Yeah, you're talking about the Bills staff, though. <laughs> I'm, slot I end feel is, like, is his position, by the way. He's not I a tight end like and he's not a he, slot. He's a slot end. We're creating yes, positions now. I like We're it. creating positions. I, I think that, you know, Kincaid's probably going to get, you know, probably about 50 receptions. He'll be somewhere around there, you know, between 40 and 50. I I – I think that Steph, if he thought about it, if we had someone like D-Hop come on, um, he would stop being doubled all the time. So I, I honestly True. think that, you know, if he thought about it with a clear head, having another star on that field would take some of the pressure off of him and he would shine even more. Instead of needing 130 receptions to, to get 1,400 yards, he would need a hundred, you know, maybe only a hundred receptions to get that same 1400 yards. Um, you know, and his targets don't need to be as high because he's not getting doubled. He'll, he'll catch more. You never know. Um, I, I personally think that we all want to be respected, um, especially at work, uh, whether or not you are liked, whether or not, I think it's a respect thing. And I think that in his mind, I don't. I think it's less with the fans. He likes touring with fans. He li like we all see that with him. I think it's more about the respect. Um, and I think I talked about you, you know, about that before with the Chad Hall situation. Allen was pretty much able to pick Dorsey as the next OC, and from what we all have heard, you know, they kind of went out and um, Chad Hall said he was going to leave, or however that worked. And uh, he wasn't really talked about, you know, talked to about whether or not he wanted who he wanted as a wide receiver coach. Did he like the person they were going to bring in? You know, what, you know, whether or not any of that is, again, speculation. Um, it's just things that, you know, I've heard when, in, with talking to some, you know, uh, to some people. So we'll see whether or not uh, it works out this year with, with Davis as our number two. I'm still, you know hopeful that someone steps up if they're not going to, you know, take, take D hop. So, but I, Maybe, I think um, that Diggs is more, I think he's more mature than that to have the fans be like, you know, making him and his feelings. I think he toys with us a little bit more because of that, but I don't think that he's really in his feelings about it. Um, That part. Yeah. I, I agree. And by the way, don't, please don't compare this to the bickering bills. This is not the bickering bill situation of 87. I would be right okay away. with it. Let but me, it's not, let me but get it's a not Super Bowl. The, but it's not the let bickering. Let me get a Super Bowl. <laughs> but they but they didn't they didn't go to the Super Bowl that year in 87. They were they no, lost in the playoffs to the Browns, but after that they followed with four. But what I'm saying is this isn't the bickering bills was not a disgruntled player complaining about um you know input and catches. This the bickering bills is about players on the team um, coming to the rescue of a of an offensive lineman that was admonished by a starting quarterback. It's a different situation. Um, it, you know, Jim made the comments about House Ballard in the press, and then that's when Thurman and the others got into it, and then that's when the bickering bill situation started. It's not as this this. That that's teammates sticking up for teammates. This isn't a guy that was like eighty nine. I thought it was eighty nine ninety ish. Uh, I was. Uh, let me think. Because uh, I I I've always the whole bickering. Yeah, it was it was eighty it was eighty nine. I got there ninety one ninety two. I guess ninety two is when I got there, 
and it was before I got there. But seriously, it's not the same thing, so don't try to call it the same thing because it's not. But we do have other stuff going on in Buffalo. We, we, we've talked a little bit. And by the way, hit like button, hit subscribe. We appreciate you listening to us here online, the game on Buffalo Rumblings Network. We'll be here all year. We're moving to Wednesdays. We'll fluctuate times a little bit, either 8 Eastern or 9 Eastern. But uh, we will be on one uh, Wednesdays. We have some other uh, awesome shows that Sarah and I are a part of that will be coming uh, forward as well. We'll get into those later uh, in the off season. We'll let you in on those a little bit. But uh, Sarah and I are going to be uh, doing a couple of things separate from one another um, right. as, as far as uh, the season goes, a little more content for your uh, football pleasures. But, hey, I did – you know, one of the other things that's great on vacation, other than catching hundreds of fish uh, on Lake of the Woods and listening to the new Jason Isbell album uh, that came out, which is lyrically unbelievable, Sarah's guy, Ed Oliver, got extended. Oh, gosh. <laughs> and I, I, I hadn't had the chance to talk to you about this. Yeah, I, did. I was like, but that's old news. But, yeah, you're right. I know it's um, old news, but we have not talked about it. <laughs> yep. He's been extended. And uh, I don't want to say, unfortunately. I'm not, gonna, I'm not going to say uh, whether I like the idea or not. To be honest with you, when I've seen the contract structure, I actually really like the contract uh, structure. We can kind of get out of it after two years. So, um, yes, it'd still be a little bit of a, you know, quite a, well, it'd be a $20 million hit if it was in two years. But um, the way they structured it is is pretty uh, team friendly uh, for, you know, for what it is. So not really necessarily a bad thing. It freed up money this year um, as well. So uh, we'll see how it works out. I, you know, hopefully. Him move, being... Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. I'm sorry. I didn't mean no, to I was going to say, point. hopefully. He, you know, he, he proves me wrong. I, you know, I joked about every time I say they're going to do something, they, they literally have done the opposite just to, to get at me. Um, but yeah, so, uh, so I, I think I tweeted you right after it happened. I was like, they're doing this to punk me, Jerry. <laughs> but in the end, like I said, it, it freed up some money. Um, so, you know, that ended up uh, freeing up enough um, for us to get Leonard Floyd. So Right, and the reason um, I brought that up is this, and you talked about it, it created the cap space, but I just think that what Bean is doing this offseason has is, is been tremendous. And what, what, do, what do teams that maybe aren't quite um, able to spend all the money they want and just give money up, what do they do? They, they're smart early, they get the guys they can get that'll help, and then they wait till later in the offseason – to get the good the, the players that are productive still can do good for you that are low hanging fruit and that is what he's doing. I think his his maneuvering throughout this offseason has been wonderful. And I love the signings they've made because they're productive players, they're good players right. and they're not breaking the bank to get them. I think it's been great. Yeah, and I mean, you know, we all want that, you know, that Von Miller splashy name, the D-Hop splashy name. Um but, you know, when you look at on paper, when you look at who we've got in this offseason, we are a better team than we were at the end of last year. So, um, you know, say what you want to say. Uh, I think that we've gotten a couple of huge potential um, free agency, you know, free agent players. Um, Puna Ford, I think it's going to be huge. Uh, Leonard Floyd. I think the whole thing with, with Puna is that he now creates depth at defensive tackle where – you know, Ed Oliver can remain in his position. He he definitely floated a little too much between one tech and three tech. So I think that um, Ed Oliver can stay where he's supposed to stay. Um, and I, th you know, I think that it's going to be Tim Settle's probably going to be the odd man out now. Um, so we'll we'll see where you know where he falls. Um, you know, I think they still keep five uh, defensive tackles. But I think Taylor Rapp was a huge free agency get. Um, and I think that it'll be interesting to see. But I, I, I my opinion, um, Hardy is going gonna, is gonna to come in there and he's going to have um, an effect as well. I think that he will show why we got rid of McKenzie. Um, and, uh, and I think he's going to prove that as long as he could stay healthy. Um, he was definitely the right, you know, the right pickup. So, 
But I also think that one thing about the Ed Oliver signing that is really, really interesting, and it kind of validates what I thought earlier. Um, Sorry, I didn't mean to laugh. I just read what R Rolf put in the comments because I said everything I do, I've said this year, the Bills have done the opposite. He put Sarah safe for the record. The Bills <laughs> won't win the Super Bowl this year. So, yeah. So I'm sorry. I could not mess that one up. That one's, that one's but funny. I, I think that the Ed Oliver signing, it kind of validated one point or one thing that I thought was true. And that was the, uh, the Bills let Edmonds go. I don't think the Bills wanted to re-sign Edmonds. I think that, I think they wanted to move on from him. I think they wanted a different middle linebacker, uh, especially with McDermott taking over. Um, I think because yeah, you look at the money, defense. you look at the money, there wasn't really that much difference. Right. And they could have probably scrounged a little bit up to keep them. Yeah. Yeah. It, it changed a little. So I agree with you. I don't, I, as much as I know there's, you know, uh, Spencer would probably kill me for saying it, but I, I, I think that they decided to move on from, from Edmonds on purpose. Right. Um, I think that they are looking at the defense. They want to attack a little bit more. They wanted to get faster, smaller. Um, so it'll be, I think that you're right there. I think that, um, but I think this off season, what Bean's done has been good. Now, hopefully this, the last couple of days doesn't linger and drag into the off season. Um, I did see a, I did see a quote from, uh, Someone that said uh, Ryan Fitz uh, Ryan Fitzpatrick said that this was going to this was going to you know was going to eventually Sullivan. be a problem. I uh, I can't I can't understand that tweet because I'm female. But um, Spence tweeted that out afterwards. If anyone knows the story behind Jerry Sullivan, I don't think Fitz. Would I do. Ever... That's why. I <laughs> really, I don't I'm think stir the pot mode. No, but I don't think Fitz would ever say that to Jerry Sullivan. Like I just don't. I. But that's me. I mean, that's just me. No, I, I agree. I agree. But I do think that there are people, and I, and I was one of them, concerned that this is something this there'd almost be kind of a hangover to it, and it would it would show up again, and it did. But again, I'll reiterate my point earlier. Everybody love everybody. You know, it's not everybody like everybody. It's not everybody go hang out after work and and you know. It's everybody love everybody. Love brings respect. It brings trust. And that's what wins games. That's what makes teams win championships. we got to get through this illusion that all these guys have to be super tight and super buddies. And like you said earlier, the quote unquote bromances and everything else and go to the, what Mitch Morris had to say, which is we've got stuff we got to get done. We got shit to do. Yeah. Yes, we got shit to do. <laughs> and the, what they got to do is get – an offensive line that has a bunch of new pieces in it. They got to get them to gel. They got a they got a uh, a split end, or I'm sorry, what did I what did I call him? A slot end. We got a slot, slot end. end. We got to get prepared for a season and get yeah. him ready to play NFL football. And obviously, everyone needs to learn the playbook. So, right. um, one playbook. thing you got a new defense. There's a lot. One to thing worry I will about. say. One thing I will say um, that I have learned over the last couple of days over a couple of conversations is um, I am one of those people that last year kept, kept on saying, kept, keep Dorsey, keep Dorsey, so we can remain status quo. Right. Um, my understanding is that was not the case. And Dorsey came in and completely wiped out Dable's uh, playbook and, and came in with his own and wanted to put his own stamp on everything. So if that's true... Um, I could see why the the offense was different last year. Um, trying to to gain their footing and um, you know, it'll be good to have this off season uh, so that people can can figure all that out uh, so they can all get on the same page. Um, so if you know if it is true, I I take it all back again because like I said, I was like keep day you know keep Dorsey. He's a day ball disciple. He'll he'll you know. Keep all everything the Come same on, and tell just the add truth. a couple wrinkles. Don't lie, Sarah. Don't say Why because he's a Dable disciple. Oh, no, him. I'm not tell saying because he was from Miami. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's the truth. He's a hurricane, so that's why he needed to keep his job. <laughs> See? He gets uh, you every time. <laughs> yeah. I'll tell you what I do. I do I'll tell you what I do. We're rolling up on 50 minutes. And um, I'll tell you what I would like to do another 50 minutes on. And I was totally 
completely opposite of what we're talking about right now. But um, I don't know if you've seen that SEC uh, schedule that's come out. And then the Big Ten came out the other day. My goodness. They've got some NFL-type schedules, man. I mean, there yeah. are some serious football getting ready to be played. SEC's college. like that every year, though. Well, I mean, you got this is the schedule with Texas and Oklahoma added. Yeah. And the yeah. new the new deal. So it's uh so welcome Oklahoma. You get Alabama at home right off the bat. So yeah. Oh yeah. And that's true, Spence. We need to bring that up as well. And the heat got smoked by a guy that couldn't Gosh. even jump over by a guy that can't even Come jump on. over the newspaper. You got me by a guy that can't jump over a newspaper. You guys, come! I'm getting attacked. I feel targeted. Yeah, no, I'm a little disappointed. Um, you know, the better team won. I, I, I'll, I'll say that. Um, I was not expecting, especially the the Heat struggled to make it. You know, past um the the play in. So the fact of the matter is, um, as an eighth seed, they they beat the number one team. They beat the number Four team, Daryl, was it? I think I think the Knicks was number fourteen. Um, and you know, and then they ended up um, you know, beating Boston, which I, I mean we uh we played well. So let's uh I'm I'll I'll say that. Now Denver was the better team. I mean, Denver you know, what they swept happened the, to watch I think they watch swept the, the Laker, Lakers. Did you watch the post game? What, my, man, my man Joker is a trip now. I oh. mean, so so Lisa Salters grabs him on the court and they're like, so you know, you know, Joey, you won you've won the MVP multiple times, you know, now you've won an NBA championship. How does it feel? I've done my job. I want to go home. <laughs> <laughs> and so then they have in the post game. Yeah. They have in the post game after the game, and somebody goes, Hey, um, is there any is there any information out yet on when you're going to have the, the championship parade? And he has this panic look on his face, and he just goes and drops his head like, I, he, I can't believe I have to stay here like three more days. I just want to go back to Serbia. That's mm-hmm. all he cares about. Yeah. Uh, I mean, which is, you know, which is great that, you know, but uh, I would feel bad for the fans that, like, he would have showed that much you know, being that upset that he had to stay for four more days because the parade's tomorrow. So, um, it, you know, it was only. It, but here's it, why. Here's why I bring Monday that to up. Thursday. But I bring that up because it, it, again, it kind of go. It kind of coincides with what we've been talking about all night. It, these guys, it, at that point in time, it's a job. They love what they're doing, but it's a job. And it's you know you, you guys job, stirred up these comments, man. I can't. Oh, don't worry. I'm gonna get them off uh, you in a minute. Uh, I'm gonna get well, them you off know you what? I I picked on Daryl, so I'll pick on Spence too. Didn't didn't Denver sweep the the Lakers? I think so. So at the same time, at least you know the the Heat made it to the finals. They did well. You know they can all keep their comments going in the comments. Like this is messed up. I was hey, finally I got, getting over I've it. Got, I've got nothing for you. My Sixers got beat by by the, uh, you know, I've got nothing for you. Man, I was getting over it. I had three days to cool down, and now y'all got me in my feelings again. <laughs> you know, I didn't even get into the fact that Jack Eichel won a Stanley Cup last night. I mean, heck, we yeah, can talk about that, too. There's a lot of Sabres fans that are – I. I I love hockey to watch it like in person. I, you know, I'll watch the Sabres, you know, um, I actually bought, um, got the ESPN plus um, pack so that I can watch it on my phone too. When I, I'm not the kind of person though, that's going to watch hockey if it's not the Sabres. So like I'll watch football from morning to night, no matter who's playing, um, no matter what, like I, I bring my uh, direct TV. Now it's, now it's a uh, uh, YouTube, but um, I have the the Sunday ticket, so I'd be at the football games watching the scores and stuff. I am obsessed when it comes to football. Basketball, I'll watch teams that I'm not a fan of, you know, to, to see certain players that I'm a fan of. Hockey is not the same thing for me. So I don't right. have the same hate for Eichel as everyone else does. Um, and I'm the opposite. So. I'm the opposite. I casually watch the NBA. I watch the, I watch the finals because I like Jokic. But I watch a lot of hockey. Watched all the playoffs. Um, I'm pissed that Vegas won it just because some, you should have to suffer 
before you win a championship. You can't, shouldn't win one in five or six years. You should have to suffer a while. But I don't have hatred for Eichel. Um, I, I think that, um, you know, him going to Vegas, I think it showed just how talented yeah. he is. Obviously, what went on in, in Buffalo was, was tough. Um, but it was, you know, I mean, it's the way it goes. Yeah. So hopefully, you know, uh, one other thing that happened, the Buffalo Bandits, they won the lacrosse. Uh, yes, National. Buffalo won a championship. Yes. So we finally have that, you know, uh, that, you know, the, the bad luck, the bad juju out the way. So it opens up the door for the, the Bills and the yes. Sabres to finally get something. So. Yes, exactly. Well, hey, are we gonna uh, are we gonna come on next week? Um, I think we could because we have so much that we were supposed to talk about tonight that we never did. So yeah, let, can... let's let's come on next week and then we can talk about I don't know maybe maybe Stefan will do something else I don't know. <laughs> well, Hopefully not. I'd like to talk the, about the it's the off stuff. season. It's the off season till training camp. So I think uh, I think we're pretty safe over the next couple of weeks unless we find out that they had their conversations that they needed to have and that didn't go so right. well. <laughs> well, actually, on the NFL ca- – in, in, in football calendars, um, just so everybody knows this, July is the month that everybody goes away. July is the month that the coaching staff takes vacation as they gear up towards the end of July and early August yep. for, for training camp. So yep. these and next three – Ahead, training camp starts on the. Tw- I was going to say training camp starts on the twenty fifth. We were just talking about it earlier. Right. So, so I would imagine probably on. next week, next week until the week before, coaches will be on vacation. Uh, you won't hear or see from anybody for a while. So that's usually when they all slip out. So same thing in college. So I, I would, I would imagine it will be quiet. So uh, I'm going to have if, if, fun if we if we can't get this settled, we're going to have to hire Ted Lasso. To be the head coach of the Buffalo Bills. <laughs> it's gonna get settled. And like like you said, even if they're not, you know, singing uh kumbaya and yes. you know it, I think we need a little, able, we need one of those drums that everybody has to whoever yeah. has a drum. They'll be able to, to go out and at least play on Sundays. They're I don't think they'll let it get right. in the way. But you know, I think uh so yeah, we'll come back next week and um and go through the stuff that we were going to talk about. So, yeah, exactly. uh, everyone, thank you for all the wonderful comments. <laughs> I'm going to yeah. have so much fun reading through all those afterwards. Thank you for the wonderful comments for Sarah. You make her feel so <laughs> special every week. Um, as a matter of fact, I think we probably should have a we probably should have a um, comment at Sarah segment on the show uh, every week. Uh, I think that'd be that'd be very popular. I think. Yeah, and I would sit here and. Uh, not know what to say for most of it. So, um, yeah, we can do that, but it's going to be all super chats. <laughs> Comment yeah. at Sarah, but have it be all super yes. chats. <laughs> I <Yes>. like it. <laughs> that is it. <laughs> See, that's that's why they that's why they pay you the big bucks. You're smart. Yeah, <laughs> the, <laughs> the big bucks. Yep. All right, all right, Jerry. Right. You want to take us out? Yeah, for Sarah Larson down in sunny Miami or Fort Lauderdale to be exact. I'm the big O, Jerry Ostrowski, in Bixby, Oklahoma, the topic of the King of Oklahoma, which is a song on the new Jason Isbell album, if I haven't talked about it 18 times. <laughs> Are um, you getting money for this? I think you're getting paid no, for this. No, I'm not. But I'm just telling you, if you, I'm just telling you, if you like lyrics and music, if lyrics drive you, if you want to hear, it's it's a freaking masterpiece, believe me. But anyway, she's Sarah Larson. I'm the big O, Jerry Ostrowski. You're listening to the Line to Gain on the Buffalo Rumblings Networks. We will be back next week on Wednesday. Uh, not sure, 8, uh, 8 p.m. No, it'll Eastern. Be or probably 9, 9. Eastern. It'll probably be 9. Probably be 9. And we're back with more Bill's Talk. We'll get into stuff we should have talked about today, um, but we didn't get to because of the happenings at one Bill's drive over the last couple of days. So, as always, one love and go Bills. Go Bills.